What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Early Edge. A very happy Thursday to The Early Edge family in the chat. Thanks for already hitting the like button. Thanks for already putting bets in the chat. I see you, Bradley Jacobs. I see you, David Tock, Lee Brown, Nick Castrucci, putting in some of your own bets as well. Let's see how our bets did yesterday before we bring in the stars of the show. Well, we'll take more green than red. Three and two, got the even money play in there. A bit of a winner. We'll take that every single time, but we always got to improve on three and two. Let's try to go four and one. Let's try to go five and oh. Let's bring in the stars of the show. That's the only way we're going to do that today. We've got buckets and all of his stuff behind him. We've got Larry Hartstein, a.k.a. Maestro. And we've got prop stars and Proppy. You and I were on HQ yesterday and we were talking about the NFL. And if there's anything the NFL can do to interrupt I don't know, the beginning of baseball season, or we're on the precipice, of course, of the NBA and NHL playoffs. And we all know, Proppy, NFL rules the world, and that's where we're going to start this show. Uh, by the way, Buckets, I did notice the top button is buttoned, and that's very awesome. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. Let's talk AFC East, AFC South. Obviously, there was a big trade yesterday. Stefan Diggs going to the Texans. We all know this. The, the Texans receiving, or I should say the Bills receiving a second round pick, a couple other things in that trade. I think there is a very interesting betting angle here. And Proppy, I'm going to start with you, Larry, then I'm going to go to you. I, I'll start with the AFC East. Proppy, we were on HQ yesterday, and you know I have an opinion here. I'm just curious, as far as the AFC East is concerned, any take here on a division winner? I know we're pre-draft, but some of these lines might be good to take now. Yeah, fascinating uh, trade, obviously. See, I look at this, obviously, as being potentially mutually beneficial uh, to both the Bills and the Texans. Let's start with Buffalo. I think this may be a case of addition by subtraction. Uh, we saw Stephon Diggs just really not on the same page with Josh Allen towards the end of the season wasn't getting targeted a lot either. I felt Buffalo's offense, when they kind of shifted to more of a run-first offense, uh, really found a lot of success. I also think there's less pressure when you don't have a dominant alpha wide receiver one uh, that commands 12 to 15-plus targets on a, on a per-game basis. opens things up more. I feel like you can spread it out. You don't have to necessarily force-feed targets uh, to one player in particular. So I think this ultimately is a good move for Buffalo's offense. I think we'll see guys like Dalton Kincaid. Uh, his role will really expand. I love the way they utilize Kincaid all throughout the season as a move tight end. Really was like a big wide receiver. They played him in the slot quite a bit. So I think Dalton Kincaid is in line for a massive uh, target share. But I don't think this is necessarily uh, a case where Buffalo takes a step back offensively I think they're still going to be very good in this Josh Allen led offense I do think they're going to run the football quite a bit and I think they'll be very effective in doing so Larry I agree that the Bills aren't going to take a step back as a result of the Stefan Diggs trade I just think they were going to take a step back regardless of whether they had him on the roster or not which is why I love the Jets at plus 240 listen if the Jets were plus I don't know 170 I'd be like oh, I still kind of like the Jets but I don't know that I'm willing to bet it but at plus 240 presumably getting Aaron Rodgers one of the best quarterbacks of all time back for the season I know we love to hate him and I'm not talking about you but the public in general uh, this plus 240 number seems way too large to me uh, do you disagree with me is this a stay away but I'm betting the Jets plus 240. I mentioned it on HQ. How do you feel about this AFC East race? A lot of sharp people are on the Jets. See, uh, uh, I think it's, this was a great trade for both teams. I mean, the Texans, when you have Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon, that offense is going to be electric. But on the Bills side, I mean, he, he was terrible the last seven games. Let's just be mm -hmm. clear. 315 yards. He caught just a little over half his targets. And then with a chance to go to the AFC title game, you drop a perfectly thrown ball down 27-24. Uh, you're the elite WR1. You cannot do that. And we've seen him fail in the playoffs. They save $20 million on the cap next year. They could draft, you know, the speedster Worthy or Adonai Mitchell uh, from Texas. Or maybe they make a blockbuster deal uh, for one of the big name wide receivers. So I think the Bills will be fine. I think Josh Allen will be fine. Uh, and the narrative, and we're going to get into the MVP, but the narrative of Josh Allen having a monster year without Stefan Diggs could carry him to the MVP. Yeah, that's completely fair. Okay, let's transition to the AFC South real quick. Let's just touch on this because I do think there's a betting angle here. Then we'll just touch on the MVP and then we'll finally get to our official picks. 
I like the Texans plus 110. I, if, you, if you've been listening to me the last three years, even when Trevor Lawrence was at Clemson, I, I was not a Trevor Lawrence guy. People that were calling him generational, I kind of chuckled at that a little bit. I, I think the Jaguars are a fine team. I think the Texans are a lot better. I think they've surpassed them. Colts, I think there's a lot of question marks with Anthony Richardson. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he'll be fine. I don't know that he's going to be healthy. And the Titans, I don't think, are, are in the conversation right now. The Texans are ascending in such a big way. And I would say that, I would have said that without Stefan Diggs too, but certainly Diggs helps the situation. Plus 110 seems very fair to me. Larry, I'm going to kick it right back to you. Let's try to do this in 30 seconds or less so we can get to that MVP conversation. How do we feel about the AFC South? It's a fair price. There's not a ton of value, but yeah, they're the rightful favorite by far. Uh, we are not paying CJ Stroud a lot of money, uh, so you can spend elsewhere. Not a lot of holes on the roster. They do have a first place schedule. That's my only concern. Yeah, that's fair. It is a tough schedule. All right, Proppy, any thoughts on the AFC South in terms of a division winner? That's a much different story, in my opinion, when you're not creeping up on teams. Obviously, the expectations for Houston last season, drastically different. Now they'll have the bullseye on them. Teams will be expecting, you know, a team that's uh, going to be good on paper. Uh, so I don't think there's any value, really, personally, on the Texans at the current price. I'd be looking at the Colts and Titans, though. I do think there is some sneaky long shot value with both of those clubs. That's interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll give you the Colts at plus 325. I'll tell you, Jay Swift agrees with you on the Titans. He says, wow, see ya. Titans definitely got a chance. I don't know that it merits a wow, Jay Swift. Like, I completely missed the ball on the Tennessee Titans. But I hear you. The Titans are a strong team. I think they made a bad decision getting rid of Mike Vrabel. Obviously, Derrick Henry not on this team anymore. Uh, a lot of changes coming to the Tennessee Titans. I, I just don't think they are the caliber right now, maybe in a couple seasons, that these other three teams are. All right, real quick, before we get to Bucket's official pick, let's take a look at the MVP odds. Larry, you mentioned this. We got, of course... The King, Patrick, I just mentioned Derrick Henry, the King. I mean, the real King, Patrick Mahomes, plus 600 to win the MVP. Josh Allen, plus 900. We got Burrow. I mean, let's see what happens with him coming back from injury. I think the Bengals are just an interesting case in general. CJ Stroud at plus 1,000, and of course, Lamar at plus 1,200. Larry, any value here in this MVP market or anything that just strikes you as a, as a curious number? Yeah, Josh Allen uh, finished top five three of the last four years, over 4,800 yards last season, 44 total touchdowns. You still have Shakir and Samuel and James Cook and Dalton Kincaid and whoever they draft or acquire. Plenty of weapons plus the narrative angle to get Josh Allen the MVP. All right, Proppy, what do you like in this one? I concur with my colleague, Larry. I think if I were to pick a selection just based off uh, these five names, I'd be looking Josh Allen's way uh, as well for all the uh, reasons Larry mentioned. Yeah, fair enough. I, I don't know that I have a strong opinion on this MVP market. This is definitely a stay with the only bet I'm willing to make right now. And I, I do want to bet the Texans plus 110, but I kind of agree that I don't know that there's a lot of value presented with that number. It's the plus 240 with the Jets of all the things we've discussed. That's one that that's a bet I'm laying out. That's a bet that I'm going to take this early on April 4th. All right, Buckets, I got to ask you, before we get to your official soccer pick, I don't know that you know all these guys, but if, if there's anything I know and that this chat knows, and by the way, the chat wants you to bring back the going the yard segment because you were so good uh, on a show that you weren't on. I think it was on Tuesday or maybe Monday. Somebody was asking for you to, uh, to roll the dice for, for some of these home run props. So maybe that's something we can bring back as well. Either way, what do you like here? You, you got to pick a name. I, like there's like a 90% chance you're going to be right based on history. What do you like in the MVP market? See, I think nine minutes and 10 seconds is the longest I've ever gone in my life, not just on the show without spoke or speaking. So cheers to me first and foremost. But with that being said, I do have a six-sided die in my hand here. So let's go old school here. We're just going to roll that. There's only five people on the board, so we're just going to pray it's out of six, one through five on the way down. We've got four. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, CJ Stroud to win the MVP. That's my official lock here. All right. If you all don't bet that, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know this show at all. Uh, I don't, Larry, I don't know what you just said, but I'm sure it was something. I said you. clip it right now. Sorry. Yeah, clip it right now, indeed. All right. Well, Buckets, we did keep you quiet for nine minutes, which means we need to have you talking again because you got a couple soccer picks. But before we actually get to our official picks, finally, let's hear a break from our partners. You hear that? It's the heartbeat of American soccer, and this rivalry is gonna get loud. The USL on CBS and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. By the way, if you have a division winner that you like, uh, might not be in the two divisions we just talked about, put it in the chat, put the number next to it. Uh, you don't necessarily need to name the book, but put the number next to it because I think the division winner market 
is something we could potentially bet early where I, I would say some of the other markets, maybe I, I'd wait till the draft, for example. But I know we have a lot of NFL special shows coming up with Proppy and, and some others, uh, probably Maestro, too. So you're going you're gonna to want to look out for that in your feed. All right, Buckets. We got two soccer picks coming from you. You have the floor. And by the way, I don't know if there's a P.O. box check. Maybe because maybe everything's okay. Uh, everything's good. Did you put the uh, Jorge Soler card up there yet? See, uh, don't worry about that. Let's get into these soccer <laughs> picks because we've got some big matches to talk about. And I want to remind everyone this. You will never walk alone. That is the mantra sung by Liverpool supporters all around the globe. And I'm telling all of you right now that you will also never walk alone as I take you guys to the pay window with our bet here. I'm looking at Liverpool versus Sheffield United. I'm taking Liverpool over three and a half team total. This means Liverpool has to score four or more goals in this matchup to cash this ticket at minus 115. In the books, I think Liverpool will score three or four here. I think they're wrong. I think Liverpool will score five, six, or seven goals here. I am expecting a massacre of this poor Sheffield United side. Liverpool not only has the best offense in England, in my opinion, they have the best offense in the world right now. And they're playing a Sheffield United side that is broken, that is battered, and frankly is playing like they don't want to be here anymore. This is a game that could see a 5-1, 6-1, 7-1 scoreline. So I love the fact that the over three and a half is playable here. Then for our second play, we're going to the Dutch Eredivisie in a big matchup between two of my favorite clubs. We've got Feyenoord, who is a team that you want to bet on if you love overs, if you love both teams to score, if you love goals, they're fantastic. And they're playing a team called Volendam, who I love because it lets me say damn on air without getting in trouble. When I'm looking at this matchup, there's only one way I want to bet this. I'm taking both teams to score at minus 110. Feyenoord is the better team, and it's not even close. They'll probably score three or four here. So consider that when you're betting this matchup. But also, this Volendam side, they're just annoying. They're like the buckets of the Dutch Air Divisi. They might not always win, but they're going to just be in the back of your head. They're that little mosquito, that gnat that never leaves you alone. Both teams to score here is a great look, considering Volendam at home with nothing to play for right now. They're going to go for goals, and they're going to have fun. If you want to get rid of that juice, you could take Feyenoord, both teams to score, and Feyenoord Moneyline at plus 125 for those of you that aren't comfortable with a minus 110. By the way, Bradley Jacobs says, I'm on the same play today, Buckets. He says, Liverpool scores six. Jeez. Wow. Okay, so three and a half doesn't seem that daunting with that type of confidence from Bradley Jacobs. Love the picks. And by the way, if you want to make this pick, go to BetMGM. New BetMGM customers can sign up today and get up to $1,500 in bonus bets. Just place your first wage of at least $10, and you'll receive up to $1,500 instantly if your bet loses with bonus code EDGE. That's Edge, E-D-G-E. By the way, Amag's in the chat. He says, I watched today specifically to see if Buckets put the Solar card up. Starting to think he lost it. Your response, Buckets. Well, my response is that Amag's is an individual that I respect and love almost more than anybody. So it is with that respect that I tell you this, Amag's. I did not lose it. It has been temporarily misplaced. And I spent an embarrassing amount of time looking for it the other day. I will continue to do so, but I promise I'm doing my best to find this, brother. Jorge Soler going, going, gone. That is very appropriate. Uh, Alex Selznick, a.k.a. Lil Geppetto, what you got? Buckets, do we know what is the current team for Jorge Soler? I do know that he got transferred to the San Francisco for Giants, not 49ers, Giants. He did indeed get transferred. Uh, by the way, uh, Steve Lochner says, Ravens to win the AFC North plus 125 on FanDuel. Lock it in now before the Ravens really bolster that line, that O-line. He says, no one is stopping Lamar and King Henry. Keith Hunt says, Detroit plus 125. All right, prop stars. Uh, you, you, you chimed in there, so I got to go right back to you because you've got an NBA prop to talk about. And, you know, we know Sharp. Sharp betters, especially in the NBA streets, they love to take a look at unders. You're taking a look at an under. What is it? I'm taking a look at an under at a guy. I've had some uh, – I've unsuccessfully faded multiple times recently, but I am not afraid to go back to the well. I'm talking about fading that arguably the hottest player in the NBA. That is Jalen Green. I'm going under 37.5 points, rebounds, and assists. For Jalen Green, who has been on an absolute tear uh, really since March 1st, really since he became a father, uh, he's averaged close to 39 points, rebounds, and assists, uh, averages 28.1 on the season. So a big jump in production for Green. I think a lot of that could be attributed to Alperin Shengun, who suffered a season-ending injury. Uh, that is when the Rockets really uh, kind of changed the direction of their team, went on a big winning streak. They also started playing a lot more up-tempo 
They were playing a lot slower, running a lot of half-court offense through Shen Goon, who's kind of like a Nikola Jokic type player. Uh, that has not been the case. They've been one of the fastest teams in the NBA without Shen Goon. But I firmly believe that Jalen Green is a major regression candidate. I do not think this production is sustainable. I do think there is. He has gotten better, but I don't see uh, this him getting this much better being something he can sustain for the rest of the season. Looking at this opponent, Golden State, both of these teams are really uh, need to win this game. I've seen Golden State lock in defensively, too, in these must-win situations. Uh, they have the length, guys like Andrew Wiggins, in my opinion, who can really uh, potentially slow down Jalen Green. So in a really competitive must-win spot for Golden State, I just think this is a good spot to fade Jalen Green, who I do believe is coming back down to earth. So I will take this inflated line. We'll fade it under 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. I will have some additional NBA props up on the site today as well, also in my Best Bets article. And there is a K prop that I like a lot as well that will find its way to the site. As we've mentioned, MLB props are officially live on the site for our subscribers, which is very, very exciting. Key phrase there for our subscribers. If you want to be a member of Sportsline, just go to sportsline.com backslash join. Type in the promo code winners. You get 60% off the annual plan. Again, just type in winners at sportsline.com backslash join. You get 60% off the annual plan. It's not just picks, folks. There's a ton of data, a ton of articles, including mine, buckets, maestros, and of course, proppies in there too, among others. Uh, by the way, we had a question, Buckets, from Eric David regarding uh, this Liverpool game and whether or not to potentially ladder Liverpool goals Eric David said he made a lot doing that with Arsenal a few weeks back yeah so as Eric mentioned there I think it was Sheffield it was Sheffield that was the match in which Arsenal won I believe six nil but they scored five in the first 45 minutes if you're looking to ladder here I do think you laddered the first half specifically if you played that over one and a half two and a half even three and a half team total in the first half you're gonna be getting close to that plus 850 number that a lot of us definitely like playing for just a sprinkle here but again I do think laddering makes a lot of sense you might want to wait for lineups, but with Liverpool, it just doesn't really matter. Even if they're playing backups, they're running over clubs right now. All right. Good answer. We got to get to my pick. We got to get to Larry's pick. But before we do that, we're going to hear one more quick message from our partners. The PGA Tour returns with the RBC Heritage, April 20th on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Before we get to my pick buckets, I'm going right back to you because I don't know if you bet the corner kicks props, but Curtis Cerna, he says, hey, buckets, how many corners will there be in the Liverpool match over eight and a half? Uh, I think he's asking about the handicap there, minus eight and a half, if I'm looking at that right over Sheffield. Uh -huh. I could be wrong, but I will say that I would actually stay off of corners here because right now it's not so much saying that Liverpool isn't good enough to get them, but I don't know if Sheffield's good enough to get enough blocks and saves to cause corner kicks. This could be that kind of game in which Liverpool do score six goals and they only need one, two or three corners to get that done. So just be careful on that one. All right. Be careful indeed. Good advice. All right. I'm going to go with a three ball. So just so you know, I gave out the three ball yesterday. It started almost, I would say an hour and a half ago. That one is tied. The one, the one with the wine, the one with Aaron Rye and Ryan Palmer and Roger Sloan. They're all even uh, each, each of the three are even through six holes. So they've got two thirds of the way to go. Hopefully Aaron Rye can pull ahead uh, with that plus money play. I've got a near plus money play another three ball today. This one is at, I believe three Oh five Eastern standard time. So you're going to want to get it in early afternoon at the very latest. I'm going back to Christian Bezadenhout. Listen, this is a guy that we've talked about a lot, especially with round matchups and on the early wedge at minus 105 in a round one three ball. You can find this pretty much everywhere because these three balls generally have some universality, some the, 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 they're the they're the one bets that you can see at like a lot of different books. A lot of different books have different matchups, but not different three balls necessarily. Over Ben Coles and Callum Terran. Listen, Ben Coles and Callum Terran, I guess they're talented golfers, but they're not really showcasing it. I mean, these guys have not been good this entire season. When you look at the metrics, whether it's the ball striking or the short game, neither of these guys have it. They've each played this course once before. So has Christian Bezadenhout, by the way. Uh, missed cuts for Ben Coles and Callum Terran. Christian Bezadenhout, 28th last year at TPC San Antonio. So listen, a three ball is never a gimme, especially when you have an 18 hole sample size. Anything can happen. You find trouble on one hole and all of a sudden that edge you thought you had, you, you kind of pull even with it. But Ben Coles and Callum Terran really haven't done anything and they don't have much of an edge in any way, shape or form over Sebez. The only thing I'll say about Callum Terran, 
is that he hits it a lot further than both Sebez and Ben Cole. So that does give him maybe a slight advantage, but Sebez has been the class. He has been the class of these three, especially with the ball striking and specifically on approach and with the short game. That's going to help him here. So even though it's a three ball, I, I prefer a matchup. I, I prefer in my round matchups. I usually try to narrow it down to a 1v1. But in this three ball, I do think we're getting value at minus 105. At some books, it's minus 110. That's totally fine as well. Give me Sebez over Ben Coles and Callum Taron. Again, that one starts at around 3 o'clock today. All right, Maestro. Uh, we talked some football, but uh, we've moved on, even though football obviously dominates. We haven't talked much baseball today. You have a couple of baseball plays. The floor is yours. Yeah, well, the Mets are certainly due to win a game, but maybe they get the second game of the doubleheader. I like the Tigers at plus money, plus 110. In the first game, it's Casey Mize against Adrian Hauser. You know, Casey Mize was looking pretty good a couple of years ago. Tommy John surgery came back. He looked good in the spring, 98 miles per hour, 20 Ks in 20 and a third innings. I know it was spring training, but he looks very good. And just the way the Tigers are going, 4-0, the way the Mets are going with, I think, a pitching edge for Detroit. I don't think they should be dogs. This should be more of a pick em game. Uh, I will take the Tigers in game one, 12-10 Eastern. And then a little bit later in the afternoon, the Twins come home to play their home opener. They busted out for seven runs, 11 hits, four extra base hits yesterday. They've got Pablo Lopez on the mound, an all-star last year, dominant in his first start, seven innings, seven Ks, no walks, going up against Tanner Bybee, five walks and only four innings against the Oakland A's, uh, did not look good. I think the Twins, a very good home team, can cool off those Red Hot Guardians. I'm going to lay it with Minnesota. All right, laying it with Minnesota. Uh, by the way, on HQ yesterday, I, I had a couple of plays which ended up coming in as well. So always like just dial into our programming. I even tweeted it out in terms of the um, the fact that I was going to be on. But me and Proppy were on there. There was a ton of really good, inf- not just from us two, there was a ton of really good info from Todd Furman, from Proppy, from me, from a lot of other uh, different people, including Eric Casillas. So always kind of check in with CBS Sports HQ uh, because – Man, I I can't tell you how much good information they give out on there. And by the way, I misspoke earlier because I said we haven't touched on MLB yet. I mean, Amex has been in the chat answering questions for the last five, 10 minutes. So this is part of the reason if you're listening to the podcast, this is part of the reason you want to be in the chat, because not only can you ask the questions, which maybe I can bring up on the show, but we usually have cappers in the chat that can answer the questions. And I can't kind of, you know, I'm not going to reiterate every single thing that's in the chat. So a a lot of good angles that some of you that are watching are finding, you're putting into the chat, Amex is answering it. We try to answer it on this show too, but we can't get to everything. So really appreciate Amax being in there. And Buckets, what's up? Real quick, speaking of Amax, I do want to give one quick PO Box update because while we were running an ad, I updated the this department has a zero days without an injury thing because I did break Amax's heart there. And a broken heart counts as an injury here for the club. So Amax, I do apologize. I will find it, but that is your PO Box update today. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I don't know if that's going to make Amax feel better, but I think it's an appropriate adjustment that you made. I think you did break his heart. Did you see? Li- listen, Buck, let's be real. Like on the last show that we were all on together with Amax, I mean, he you could tell like it it, it hit him. It, no, it, it, it did hit him and it did hurt him. And I'm not trying to hurt Amax ever, but I will say he gave it to you. So he sent it to me in the mail. Amazing gift. Amazing present. It was a week before I moved from Indiana to Columbus. And so I packed it. And the problem is, is I don't know where I packed it. So it's somewhere in the apartment. Um, I just, yeah, not a clue where. Full right. disclosure. Well, we're going to find it. We are going to find the Jorge Soler card. Uh, of course, Jorge Soler transferred to the San Francisco Giants. Uh, uh, Proppy, go ahead. I would also suggest strongly to all of you, the day that he does find it, we definitely have to bet his home run prop. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Even if they're not playing that day, you got to put it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about people that are playing today. Let's take a look at the recap screen. Buckets, Vold- Volendam. He gets to say, damn. FC Volendam, Fire Nerd. <laughs> Both teams to score minus 110. Liverpool team total over three and a half. A lot of fanfare for that one in the chat as well. Potential laddering. We talked about that. I've got a Valero Texas Open round one three ball, which starts this afternoon around three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's Seabest going back to him, minus 105 over Ben Coles and Callum Terran. Jalen Green under 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. We are trying to get ahead of it. Regression candidate. That's minus 118. And Larry Hartstein, aka the Maestro. Tigers money line plus 110 game one and twins money line minus 144. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was a show that was packed with, I mean, we were only missing a couple sports there, and we're going to be covering that sort of the rest of the way this week. We're probably going to touch on women's Final Four. We're going to touch on men's Final Four. We're going to touch on hockey. We've got so many sports to talk about. We tried to touch on everything that was relevant today in the here and now, including the NFL, which is just always going to dominate the news cycle. Uh, uh, Tip of the cap to Roger Goodell. Like, he's (laughs) taking over Christmas at this point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to get out of here. Thank you. A big thank you to Jake the Snake on the ones and twos for making all of this happen. Of course, Prop Stars, Buckets, The Maestro. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Let's try to cash some of these bets. We'll see you here tomorrow, same time, same place for Big Pick Energy Friday. My name is The Counselor. This is The Early Edge, and we rest our case.